As you all should know, I love Tim Burton films. I think they're very unique and whimsical and in a way, somewhat magical. Uh, so today I have decided we should do an iceberg on the Tim Burton universe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this short iceberg. Level 1. Who is Tim Burton? Timothy Walter Burton, better known as Tim Burton, was born on August 25th, 1958 in Burbank, California. As a child, Tim Burton loved horror movies. Now, when he was a kid, the scariest movies were the Universal films. We're talking Dracula, Frankenstein, The Mummy, The Invisible Man, and The Werewolf Man. We're the horror villains of his day. Compared to what we have nowadays, where we have Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Ghostface, Chucky, Pennywise, and way too many different horror movie villains. Back then, horror was a more low-budget and not-so-popular or terrifying thing, by today's standards, of course. Nevertheless, Tim saw the humanity in each of these monsters. He saw them as humans and not monsters. This is, of course, what caused him to make creepier movies. Not horror movies, but eerie and creepy movies. Collaborators. Tim Burton has had a few friends along the way who appear in multiple of his works. This includes Danny Elfman, who has done nearly all the music for every single Tim Burton project. Johnny Depp, who has been in a bunch of Tim Burton films. His catalog includes The Corpse Bride, Edward Scissorhands, Sleepy Hollow, Sweeney Todd, both Alice in Wonderland adaptations, and Dark Shadows. Helena Bohem and Carter has appeared in various Tim Burton films, and there are others, but those are the big three that come to mind. Burton Theory. I've talked about this briefly on the channel, but this basically states that Tim Burton is connecting every single one of his films together in a shared universe. It's almost like the Pixar theory, but way more complex, and some of the points are very, very lucrative and could be broken very easily. Level 2. Burton did not direct The Nightmare Before Christmas. 30 years ago, this film actually debuted, and with this, Tim Burton was the producer. Burton had originally written Nightmare as a poem, but he did not direct it. No, this was actually picked up by the Coraline director, Henry Selick. Now, at the time, of course, Coraline wasn't around, but that's what he's most known for, I think. Selick was also the director for James and the Giant Peach, as well as Wendell Wilde. Tim Burton was married to Helena Bohem Carter. These two did have a relationship together, and they had two children. There isn't really a lot to say on this matter, because I don't really care about a lot of celebrity gossip. Batman films. And there's a big story behind the Batman films, a huge one. At the time, Batman had one film, the Adam West version. After the massive success of Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure and Beetlejuice, Warner Brothers picked Burton to do a Batman movie. Now, Burton wasn't even a big comic book guy, but somehow he made a really good Batman movie. And there was a lot of controversy at the time around Michael Keaton being Batman. I don't really know why, but there was. Obviously, the movie was a smashing success and everybody liked it. Then Burton returned to do Batman Returns in 1992, which is my personal favorite. Somehow, critics and fans weren't really keen on it. Despite this, the duo was greenlit to, for a sequel. However, due to personal reasons, Keaton and Burton stepped away from the project that would have been Batman Continues. Of course, we got the train wreck of a Batman Forever, Val Kilmer was the Bat, but Keanu Reeves, Johnny Depp, Kurt Russell, and Ethan Hawke were all considered to be Batman in that film. There were even rumors that Batman and Robin would team up and Catwoman would re return. Two-Face and Riddler would be villains along with Scarecrow. These were all rumors for the Batman Continues film. Now, there are other factors that came into play for why Batman Continues was actually never made. Burton has stated in a meeting with Warner Brothers, he felt as if they were trying to oust him from another Batman film. This is due to the fact that the media and parents were very upset over how dark Batman Returns was, which is really stupid. I mean, if you look at the Batman comics, they get pretty 
dark. This is what you get from Batman. DC is known to be the darker side of comics, and especially Batman. So, all these parents complaining clearly should have looked at the source material. When Burton left, Keaton left to stay loyal to Burton. In fact, in regards to The Flash from 2023... Keaton actually asked Burton's permission, and Burton said it would be great for him to go back and reprise the role of Batman. And, of course, that movie became an absolute train wreck that nobody watched. But still, everybody said that Michael Keaton had the best part. Billy D. Williams and Michelle Pfeiffer were set to return in Batman Continues. Marilyn Waynes was cast actually as Robin. In fact, he would have been in Batman Returns. But there were too many characters that Burton felt like there would be no screen, screen time or room for Robin. There was even a Catwoman spinoff planned. I mean, Burton had an entire DC universe basically lined up that he was planning. And then Warner Brothers was kind of like, yeah, you're not going to do it. Level 3. The original Frankenweenie. In 1984, Tim Burton released Frankenweenie. A take on the dog that was brought back to life much like Frankenstein's monster. This movie stars Daniel Stern, which is the guy who played Marv in Home Alone. I thought that was a fun fact. Tim Burton's first film. Pee-wee's Big Adventure was Tim Burton's first ever film. This film was based on the series Pee-wee Herman. It is very odd to me that this was actually Tim Burton's first film because it is very childlike compared to his other movies. And if... On a technicality, this isn't his first film. It's his first full-length feature film. Vincent, which came out in 1982, was Burton's fi first film, but we'll get to that later. Tim's films have references to German expression. Yes, Tim Burton was a fan of the German horror films. Now, these films include Nosferatu, Nosferatu? I think I pronounced that right. Nosferatu, that's the most famous one that's for some reason getting a remake this year, and it's like over 100 years old or something. But anyways, these films used shadows to cast fear into the viewer's eyes. They would create more creepy environments that are really just unsettling. It wasn't really about jump scares back then, it was more like, let's create an unwell environment. And of course, this is echoed in almost any Burton work. You see that Burton relies on the environments to immerse the viewer into his worlds. And he creates the movies usually more with a darker cinematic look to where shadows and everything really come into effect. His short film Vincent is a perfect example of this. Level 4. Vincent. Speaking of Vincent, we finally get to talk about it. Now this is a short film that he used stop motion for and it showcases a young boy who is disturbed at the very least he is an odd child who is grim and moody he is very interested in the works of edgar Allan poe and this short film is a wild trip if you have not seen it but it is very very much so a work of burton cancelled films when it comes to cancelled films batman continues is the first that comes to mind but since we've already talked about that let's move on to all the others Burton was set to direct After Hours, which later was actually picked up by Martin Scorsese. Burton was also asked to return to the table of Pee Wee Herman for a sequel. He declined. <clears throat> As we already know, Vincent Price was a very big inspiration for Burton. Burton actually worked with Price on the short film Vincent. And a Hansel and Gretel TV special that we might actually get to a little later and Edward Scissorhands. Those were all the Vincent Price and Burton works. But Burton actually wanted to make a documentary of all things on Vincent Price. Now I got never finished due to other projects being in the way, but from what I could read, it was kind of a long development, at least in early stages, and then it was kind of just shelved and never touched again. The 1991 Adams Family, which is the most popular rendition of the Adams Family, was actually supposed to be directed by Burton. As we all know, Burton would go on in 2022 to create Wednesday uh, for Netflix. Before Michael Crichton even published Jurassic Park, Hollywood was looking to get the rights of this book, and they were going to have Tim Burton direct it, which is really weird to me. 
Thankfully, Steven Spielberg got this project and made the masterpiece that we all know as Jurassic Park. There was even going to be a film about Edgar Allan Poe's The Fall of the House of the Usher, which Tim would have headed. A Goosebumps movie was going to happen with Burton, but the rights were sold off, and later it was all used to make the 2015 Goosebumps. A Nightmare Before Christmas sequel that thankfully never saw the light of day was going to happen. This actually was because Burton said to Disney, we're not going to do it. Disney was really pushing for CG animation, and Burton said that would take away from the magic, so it never happened. A Batman musical was about to happen, I don't know why, same thing goes for Charlie and Chocolate Factory musical, which sounds like an absolute nightmare. Another Pee Wee Herman film, a sequel to a, a little film called Nine was actually going to happen, never materialized. Uh, Burton was even going to make a movie by the name of Monster Apocalypse. This was going to be using the kaiju figures in the film. I think it actually would have been really neat. It was going to be like a stop motion type film. It, it, it could have been easily one of his best movies. There was even a planned Dark Shadow sequel, Hunchback of Notre Dame retelling, a Pinocchio film, a bunch of Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children sequels, The Last American Vampire, which would have been, of course, a sequel to Abe Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Burton was briefly actually attached to both Pirates of the Caribbean 5 and Maleficent, which is wild to think about. But there are three films that I have not mentioned that, in my opinion, are more interesting than the rest. Number one, a film called Deep, which would have been similar to Nine, in which it would have been set in a post-apocalyptic war by the name Deep. We can only speculate that this would have had to deal with Deep Sea and the depths of the sea. It, it probably would have been cool. It would have been a darker animated film. It, it could have been cool. Secondly, we have Toots and the Upside Down House, which is a ridiculous name, but it actually was going to be a Disney film, with Selkin Burton on the job once again. This would have actually followed the story of the book by Carol Hughes. This story is about a young girl grieving the death of her uh, mother, who goes to a fantasy world inside her home. Because her dad won't pay attention to her, she would have fought Jack Frost, and it would have been a crazy, fantasy, weird movie. This was shut down by Disney, and as it seems, some of these ideas kind of were translated into Coraline, which Selk made. Now, of course, Coraline and Toots, the Upside Down World, were both similar plot points but they were also both novels at one time i just think it's an interesting coincidence that both of these had similar plot points and that they were written before the films or planned films but most importantly by far the most important thing tim burton was going to make the biggest thing that we all wished he would have made superman lives yes this is the superman with nicholas cage burton literally signed a contract saying he would do this film. Kevin Spacey was approached to be Lex Luthor. Christopher Walken would have been Brainiac. Actually, Jim Carrey and Gary Oldman were also uh, approached for that role. Courtney Cox, Sandra Bullock, and Julian Moore were all considered for the role of Lois Lane. And best yet, Chris Rock would have literally been Jimmy Olsen. This could have been the greatest Superman film and possibly the greatest superhero film or maybe the worst superhero film, but depending on how you look at it. Even Michael Keaton teased that he could have possibly appeared. Now, the story would have been about how Superman had died, and now he had returned. If you're unfamiliar with the comics, this is a pretty big story in the DC Comics, and Tim Burton executing this could have been really interesting and very dramatic and cool. Honestly, in James Gunn DCU, I hope a couple phases later, once we get the Justice League and everything, maybe he'll do his version of Superman Lives. I think it would be a cool thing. But seriously, this is an absolute travesty. I mean, Kevin Spacey as Lex and Sandra Bullock as Lois Lane would have been crazy. And above all else, could you imagine if either Christopher Walken or Jim Carrey was Brainiac? I mean, it's just insane. <clears throat> Tim Burton is a fan of Vincent Price. We've already covered this, so let's move on. Level 5. The World of Stain Boy. As we all know, Tim Burton is a poet, but The World of Stain Boy has been his latest endeavor in this poetic world. You guys can go get it on Amazon. It looks 
definitely like something Burton would make. Beetle House LA. A Beetle House is a year-round celebration of Halloween with an atmosphere inspired by Tim Burton, Alfred Hitchcock, Bram Stoker, and more. It's a bar and diner in LA, and there's also one in New York. Level 6, Hansel and Gretel. I briefly touched on this, and this is something that not a lot of people know about, but Tim Burton made a film for Disney Channel called Hansel and Gretel. Now, this special was only aired once, and there is a re-recording here on YouTube. Now, it only aired once because it was too scary for children and all that stuff. Later this year, during any haunts, we will watch and review it because I want to, and I think it would be fun. Now, I do have a bonus entry that is not on this iceberg and isn't actually well known. In 1985, Disney released possibly the darkest film, The Black Cauldron. What you might not know is that Tim Burton actually drew concept art that was deemed too terrifying for this film, which is crazy to me, considering that this film is very dark and terrifying to a young child. So, this means that Tim Burton actually would have been an animator on The Black Cauldron, and I think that Disney missed out on that opportunity. That's all I have for you guys today. Hope you guys liked the video. It was a quick and short iceberg, very fun one. Hopefully it was very informative for you guys. And with all that being said, peace out. See you guys in the next one. Come back next week for more content. Have a great day.